pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to the agenda. Uh, I move that we add a, a 12th agenda item for executive session where uh, premature disclosure may uh, put the city at a disadvantage. We have a uh, motion from Chad. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mike to go into executive session. Any comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So moved. So we'll start with public comments. Tom, you got any? No, Chip, you got any? Yeah. 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 Marty? What? Peter, you got any public comments? All right. We'll move right along. Oh. Uh, so we're going to move to item number three, planning and development report. Uh, consider recommendation to change height regulations in the service industrial district. Chip, thank you for coming in tonight. Um, as you know, uh, the St. Albans Walker Creamery has merged with Dairy Farmers of America, and uh, some of what we saw in the lead up to that vote was that uh, DFA would be able to help the creamery expand its operations, uh, you know, get into new markets, and so on and so forth. Their engineers, both the creameries and DFAs, have looked at what's next for that site, and they've um, concluded that the type of silos they have to bring in for the next stage of capacity there are higher than the um, what we allow in the service industrial district under a waiver by the DRB. Right now, if you get a waiver from the DRB, you can go up to 85 feet in height. And the kind of technologies they're looking at are silos that are um, you know, around 100 feet or more. And when they do an analysis of all the things they might have to add, catwalks and stuff, they think that um, they made a request that we uh, consider going up to 105 if you get a waiver from the DRB. Um, I, I think it's I think it's something that we could design that would work out pretty well and allow for the extension of the site and perhaps others as needed. I looked around for other tall structures. I think the co-op's current silos are around the 85 foot height, pretty much, or something like that. Um, but we've got two grain elevators in the city, both are at 120 or more. Um, so there is some precedent for having sort of storage or movement structures like that that aren't meant for human occupancy, but they're meant for the manufacturing side of things. They go up pretty high. Um, what I'm suggesting is that the city council um, make a request to, to draft the change. And we run it through the process, have the Planning Commission hold their hearing for comments, see if they have any um, suggested edits, that sort of thing, bring it back to the council for your two hearings on the potential change. I agree. I think, I mean, I've got constituents on Federal Street that might want to chime in on this too. I don't mm -hmm. know, so. We took a lot of heat when we um, allowed them to increase the height of that grain elevator. Mario, were you mayor then? When they did that, or were you on the, oh, were you on the board? Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Were you on the DRB with me then, or were you mayor? Mayor. You were mayor, and and I, I remember I remember getting some heat for that uh, from the up from from the upper side of St. Albans, yeah. not so much from people in Jimmy's ward, but yeah. The hill section that was. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Uh, a silo is a big thing, you know. It's not. It, it's they're big. <laughs> And uh, uh, they take up a lot of space. Uh, they uh, can interfere with a good portion of the view from the upper side of St. Albans. So, and I don't know if that's worth it or not. But we, sh I, you know, I just don't want to, um, us to haphazardly go into. Yeah, uh, let's do it because it's the co-op. Yeah, I like the co-op. They're good neighbors. Um, and. Uh, as long as we take a good look at it, make sure everyone gets a fair shot to take a look at it, rather than just try and run it through the, the process. I, I remember we took we took some heat on that grain elevator. When I looked at that case, and we can look at it more in terms of what we heard, but one of the things about that one is that we had to do it as a very It was after. 
it, it, was a, it was after we did it. And a lot of people were saying, well, if I'd have known it was gonna be like this, or if I knew it was gonna look like that, that's, that's, what, we were, that's what we took for heat. It wasn't yeah. the people that came to the hearing. All right, because I, a lot of people said we didn't even know there was a hearing. So, just, I'm just throwing that out there. And I, and I do like the idea that it's, so what's it gonna be, conditional use process um, for the waiver? Yeah, I guess it would, it would, it would have to be part of the site plan process, but you, it would be a DRB hearing, all the ones get the mailing, you know, it's the DRB yeah. process. Yeah. And, and, that, and that may have been the problem, the abutters got the notices right. and the, the people that actually it affected their view did not get the notice and so they didn't have a chance to come in and I think that is where the problem might have lied back then yeah. so uh, take a look at that when you're looking at this well, as part of our look we might be able to have see if the premier is able to do some visuals that would show us what the difference would be like their silos right it would probably only be 15 feet higher than their current silos so we could use that as some context and see what the impact might be. Well, if, if anyone wants to take a look at it, go up to, um, um, I call it the old Governor Smith Insight, and look down and take a look at the grain elevator and imagine a set of silos, you know, a uh, hundred feet away um, in the same, in proximity to the same area. So, mm -hmm. and, and have them there, yeah. big round silos there and see, see what you think. And that, that might be a good way to take a look at it. The proposal here is not as tall as that grain elevator. Right, it's not. That's 105 feet, and these silos are going to be 80 feet, right? 80 feet on the pad? No, the we're, we're asking, the request here is for 100, to go up to 105 okay. feet. Okay. The grain elevator is 120. 120, okay. So is that is that 105? Okay, so only 105, 105 not 105 on the pad. From the ground to okay. the top. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, well, a little bit lower, and you'll get right. a good idea of no, what it I, is. No, but I hear yeah. your concerns. And are, right. are, they, are they replacing the ones that are there, or no? I don't know. I don't know. A lot we need to know about this yet. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Let's 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 accommodate them as much as we can. Yeah. And but let's just make sure that everyone gets a fair shot at it. Peter, is this? One? Are you here for this one? <laughs> yes, I am. Do you want to speak uh, to? Him? Sure, I can address a couple of these items. Uh, first of all, no, I don't believe they are replacing existing silos. I think they're going to be replaced with new silos. Uh, first of all, no, I don't believe they are replacing existing silos. Uh, the DFA wants to modify the operations of the creamery to follow good manufacturing practices, GMPs, they call them. And that means that they don't mix different types of milk in the same silo as they are currently doing. So uh, there's a silo for whole milk, there's a silo for skim, et cetera. Uh, currently, they, as I understand it, they do wash the silo and they, they use it for other types of milk as they need to for storage. So that's why they need additional silos. And to be efficient, they need <coughs> silos for greater volume because it is a pretty small site down there. There's not a lot of room. They are planning on adding another building down there for receiving vehicles, tanker trucks, mostly to unload the milk. So it's a small site and they need to use it efficiently. And uh, using taller silos is one way to do that. Now to Tim's question, I believe, is the silos won't be 105 feet tall themselves. They're, they're on a concrete pad that's about four feet off the ground. And then there is a, a catwalk and railings on top. So I expect the silos will be about 95 feet uh, themselves, and, and then by the time you get them installed with the catwalk, it could approach 105. And where do they anticipate putting them, Peter? They'll be in front or near the existing tall stainless steel silos. There's three down there now that are 70 footers, um, which are about 80 feet once they're installed. So there's three there now, and these, as I understand it, these new ones would go pretty much in the same location, probably in front. Uh, towards Federal Street, but I don't think the site plan has been formalized yet. Okay. Any other questions for Peter? So we're still a ways. We're still a ways anyway. So, yeah. 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 so if so. I could just explain the, the schedule, the, the goal is to be ready next spring to start construction on this project. And we can't move forward with the permitting under the current zoning bylaw because of the height limit of 85 feet. Mm -hmm. So the very first step is to ask the council to modify the bylaw and the planning commission to modify the, the bylaw. And once that's modified, then we can move forward with site plan approval to the, for the, from the DRB, and we also have Active 50 approval. So we're pretty much on a, in a holding pattern until this issue is addressed one way or another. Which is interesting because Active 50 would give a lot of other avenues for public input. Um, <clears throat> for my education, for the DRB could 
could uh, approve a waiver without the change? Right now, the most that the DRB can approve a waiver for is 85 feet. Although, basically, unless you get a variance, um, which I don't see being likely in this current regime, okay. especially with the variance rules that, that are in state statute, um, you, you wouldn't be able to go higher than 85 feet. Okay. This allows for any case in which someone wants to go higher, whether it's 85 now or 100 or whatever might get approved, that they have to go before the DRB and have a conversation, the voters get mailed, uh, voters get warning, uh, hearings, hearing notices, the DRB has a conversation with the applicant about, you know, so justify to us why you want to go higher than the typical allowed heights. Um, so uh, Chip is uh, asking that we consider a motion to request that staff draft an amendment allowing the 105 foot height waiver in the service industrial district and refer to the Planning Commission for a hearing in their comments. Yeah. Is there anyone who would like to make that motion? So moved. Second. So, okay, there you go. Kate, second. Michael? Yes, yeah. it was Mike and Kate uh, with a motion. Any other comments on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Mr. Massage? Chip, do you have a little move forward? Thank you. We have uh, South Main Street. City has um, heard a lot of comments from uh, different different folks in the area of South Main Street and the state St. Albans State Highway, which we call the Sash, which is the road that gets you from South Main to the 19th. Um, there is a crosswalk where the sash meets South Main, but it is rather wide, and there's a lot of traffic with turning movements in that area. Basically, commuter traffic at the same time that children are trying to cross that crosswalk to get to the St. Albans Town Educational Center. And um, there have been various different ideas pitched to city staff that I've heard anyway. I don't know if any of you have had any contact with folks about if we could add crosswalks to the area to get students over one side and then get them back over to the other side where SATEC is. And, you know, just different ideas. Um, you may recall that there is a long-term plan to have a traffic signal out there if the Federal Street connector is ever completed. But we don't know when that's going to happen. It's not something I would count on to solve what people might think is an imminent safety situation right now. So, you know, there are some options. We could put a pedestrian island at the, at the bottom of the sash. We could consider a three-way stop. We could add crosswalks. There have been other requests for crosswalks on South Main, around Max, around the industrial park, places like that. So um, I talked to Dom, and, and we were wondering if uh, the city council would just authorize us to get some experts, some engineers on board to go over different options for dealing with some of these pedestrian issues around the sash in South Main. Mm. Using current, currently budgeted funds. What, I mean, what times are these problems? And just during the school session? Yeah, you're right. Uh, most most times we're hearing about the children. Yeah. They're actually walking in various different ways from those yeah. residential areas in the town. They I see them every morning. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. I'm they, have to, yeah, they have to come there, and that's the point at which they have to cross the sash to get to the other side. Um, and yeah, they have, and, to, and they have to go home, too. Right, I think it's worse at some times than at others, for sure. Yeah. And it's 35 miles an hour out there? It's 35 on South Main and yeah. 50 on the sash. Um, I, do, do you ever ride around in some of the villages and towns where they have um, a blinking light that says, when the light's blinking, the speed limit's only 20? Uh, and not 35. Oh, yeah, well, I, like should, I, sh I should correct myself. SATEC does have a blinking light that drops it to 25. Okay. In that area. All right. I don't recall seeing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if it goes as far south as the sash, though. Okay. It, goes, it goes north. But it's around that area. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's there. Yeah. Okay. Part of the pedestrian crossing sign? We are, we are looking at um, putting a pedestrian crossing sign in the crosswalk directly across from SATEC. Um, what is but, the flashing light associated with the strobe light like flashing lights? No, the, uh, what's out there right now is the school speed limit situation. Those might, no, no. Yeah. When it's, light is flashing, it, the speed limit is 25. That's what it is right now. I know, what I know is right now. That's, I've been advocating for the other side to sort of so That's light. done. That's in this year's budget, and we're putting the okay. pedestrian crossing in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you still want one in front of your place? 
<laughs> yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> we could just give you a backpack, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be retired at the end of the year. I can drive drugs. <laughs> Will that not fix the problem? Um, but, that's, think, but that's not the. Um, that's not we don't the know. Problem. We don't have anything for the bottom of the sash yet. Okay. We're one, we'd like to get some experts on board to give us some options. They can look at the current situation, see where the problems are, answer the very question you asked Tim about, you know, when are these problems actually occurring and how bad are they? And then what are some of the ideas that we can implement quickly that could uh, deal with the situation? Well, three-way stop would be quick. Um, I know that's not everybody's favorite, but it's better than a traffic light. Um, but I think the, Tim's idea about the flashing lights when, 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 you know, when they're flashing, so reduce the speed because there's students coming in is a good idea. But that, that would be, can we, can we put something like that on that state access road though? Doesn't the state kind of govern what happens on it? There's a, we have to engage them, but I think that, you know, I think we could, I'm sure we can handle that. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion then to uh, request a study for the Sash South Main Street intersection and pedestrian crossings. Second. Any other comments? I'd love to see us do something about this. It's a really unsafe intersection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and my, I'm going to build off from Chad's comment to me a while back, and I, I don't know if this is a little bit of a stretch, but I don't think it'd be that much more, but to look at that um, sidewalk scenario on Mason down by the railroad tracks. We're sort of tying it all in that, that sidewalk crossing, right, is that the one you're concerned about, uh, coming up Mason. So we're gonna have town kids coming up through the city to get to, and that sidewalk is... It ends before the tracks. Yeah, it ends before the tracks. There's no crossing there, there's no crosswalk. I think it's an easy fix. It probably won't add much to the, the scope of it, but maybe look at a little, a little bigger scope yeah. if you're going to be looking at uh, the whole picture. Yeah. Well, this is the second time today Tim's told me we need to think a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, just, that's good. Uh, we, we have found that Dom is restricted in his thoughts. <laughs> I think that will make me have the budget in mind as well. <laughs> so we have a motion on the floor, seconded. Uh, any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. And lastly, Chip, you have um, brownfield authorization. Um, Funding authorization. In June, when the source has been used for the Commerce Domain Project we're about for the Council, you'll notice one of the lines did say uh, NRPC and state brownfield loans. Um, we've executed the loan with the uh, NRPC, the Regional Planning Commission for Brownfields, and the um, state uh, loan is just asking that we have uh, the Council motion specifically authorizing that loan. It's for three hundred ninety-three dollars, five hundred, uh, three hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred three dollars. They go around that out. I'll make a motion. The city council authorize uh, entering into the loan with Vita and the state of Vermont for three nine three comma five zero three toward the brownfield remediation for Congress and main project. Second. Motion by Tim, seconded by Mike. Any questions for Chip? Any other Just out of curiosity, what are the terms like on a loan like that? They're good. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like they're great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> bond bank. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Motion on the floor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Chip. Peter, Thank thanks you. for coming in. Thank you. Next on the agenda is um, allocation application for North Star's masonry. I don't see where anyone is here for that. We want to move forward. It's fairly straightforward. Yep. Don't look at her. Move forward. How are you? What time are they scheduled? 650. Okay, so that's what it is. Yeah. Did we invite them, Kristen? I told them about it um, right after I got their application. It was definitely a mistake.
Do you want to go to item five for a minute and see if they show up uh, a couple we, minutes late? Do we need to? I mean, I think it's a straightforward application. Okay, it's fine. Let's do it. Okay, I would uh, entertain a motion. And we'll be approved the extraterritorial allocation application for no spare remission. Second. We have a motion by Chad, second by Jim. Any questions for Dom or Kristen relative to this? So this is out of Franklin Park West. Um, it would be a good addition to the to the community. So, no other questions. All those in favor to Jim's motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. Tom Girl. Actually, it was Chad's motion, wasn't it? Chad's motion. Yeah, Chad's Jim, 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 Jim second. Yeah. yeah. I tried to sneak in, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> The read soft. Uh, how are you? So we had a read soft uh, memo in front of you some months back, which uh, gave staff some additional responsibilities to the council in terms of um, some routine matters of business. Uh, so at the last meeting, Tim suggested we go a little further, um, and there were some head nods in the room. Um, so we put together some dollar amounts. Um, probably your, your reaction is they're really low. Um, and the reason for that is one of the primary roles uh, that we have to do upstairs in accounting is fraud prevention. And the, the ironclad way to prevent it, um, first off, the history of fraud in local government is that it always starts small, and if folks aren't looking to keep them close light in the checkbook, it accumulates. Um, 50 bucks sounds really low, but the ironclad way to prevent it then is at the end of the month, every bank account is balanced to the penny the same way you would balance your own and go through every transaction. Um, so in essence, even if you're doing great, you're always 30 days behind. Uh, so there's that multiplier that you think about from a fraud perspective, and if you think, you know, 500 bucks is a better amount, well, 500 bucks can multiply pretty quick. Um, so it's a low amount, but it's pretty consistent with, with local governmental norms. Um, any of those amounts we're comfortable with, um, you know, from our perspective, it makes our life easier to leave us nine voices a year is an awful lot, and that's numbers growing, you know, 5% a year. Um, so we can, we can revisit it if you think 50 bucks is too low, or we can consider some alternatives. I, I think it's too low, but I, I like it. But, Tom, how many sets of eyes look at one of these? I mean, we're not like Sheldon. Where, and and my, I'm not saying anything derogatory about Sheldon, where they only have a couple of people or maybe one person looking at it. We've got a lot of eyes looking at this stuff. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say it's kind of more than difficult to uh, commit that type of fraud in this scenario that we have that that we that we have here in the city hall? Yes, but at the same time, um, you know, the auditors were here last month, and so in a strange way, it left us a little more open because we're visiting with them so much that you fall a little bit behind. Um, and, you know, again, if you look at the history of fraud, um, <laughs> there's a lot of common factors. Usually it's a personal problem, um, but folks can get creative. And the higher that amount goes, the more I've got to worry and think about it versus doing other productive things, helping the city manager and other things. Mm -hmm. And um, it takes away from your checklist, but it adds a little bit to mine. Maybe that's a little bit of a selfish answer. Um, you know, again, I think of that 30 day multiple, um, where if you have 30 days to commit it, um, you know, an open session, I don't want to go around and create a tweet, <coughs> but okay, yeah. people could potentially do. Um, I can find it on the internet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> so I, think, I think keeping it low for now is, is a good first step. Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is fun. In fact, are we seeing it now? We're, we're seeing some of it now, aren't we? You're seeing some of the smaller ones. We took away some of the routine yeah. things, you know, printer contracts and auto parts, things like that. Who might, who, who was approving with me this time? Who else is approving no, with me? Yeah. You are? Yeah. yeah, aren't you seeing a difference? Yeah, yeah. So it's, like, much, yeah. it's yeah. much less of the like $5 at ease for a hammer or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm, it's, you know, you, it's, I think we're going to lose 30 pieces. Five bucks? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Can I say all this? One screw. <laughs> Sorry. So there's there's something else is there's, there's, there's a rundown of the amount uh, of the number of vouchers. When you get to the fifty dollars, it says one thousand eight seventy. Is that 
Cumulative from zero to 50, or is that between 25 and 50? That's cumulative. Okay, so it's going to be about 1,800, maybe 2,000 in vouchers. Okay. Okay. And that's an annual number. Oh, so that's not, okay. You don't have, you don't have those all together, that's all combined. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I personally don't mind doing check points just because it kind of gives you a, a low down on you know, what's happening within the city. <coughs> I've never, to me, if, if this seems like it's too much, maybe some people, if they don't want to do it, then they just don't do it. And we just, that's the way we, you know, we can have four people do it and have four people do it. I mean, I, not that there's a whole lot of mistakes, but I always find two or three where it grabs the wrong. The software grabs the wrong number, and you know it's never a lot, but it's you know ten or fifteen bucks here or there. It just just needs to be corrected. I don't need to. I don't need to inspect the city's operating budget or the the city's uh, receipts of um, you know Green Mountain Coffee. Oh no, no know, I agree. Or, or paper cups or paper towels. I, I, that that doesn't <laughs> concern me. What concerns me is that project or mm -hmm. how much we're spending uh, for the engine for the engineer. That's the stuff I like to look at. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're how much paper someone's buying or how much you know uh, coffee someone's buying or who's taking who to lunch. Yeah. You know, so well, I am worried about the tickets well, that we're reimbursing him for when he's out. <laughs> <early night. laughs> no, that's okay. That's never over. Is that over fifty bucks? That's never over fifty bucks, is it? I'm glad we're all sharing it as, rather than having what in the past when we had a finance committee and you had the same older yeah. persons doing it. All I like to keep, I mean, I gripe about it and I'm just kidding around when I'm doing it. And it's, I know it's a responsibility of sitting here to do that. And I think we should continue to do it that way. I don't think we should have one or two people do all of it all year long. I still think, yeah. I just, you know, a couple of years ago we talked about it, it was $200 here for yeah. Christmas lights and $300 here. Yeah. When it was all said and done, it was like three grand. Mm -hmm. And I know you picked up on it because yeah. I emailed you and I'm like, are you picking up on it too? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. So it's just, you know, not that it's a big deal, it's a whole scope of things, but yeah. it just gives you an idea of what's happening. Especially if you're, you know, if you're a new city councilor. But you could still, guys. let's assume that we go ahead with this and uh, you have the still 1870, you can still review it. Right. I still review it and it's still all on the warrant. Yeah, he can still mm -hmm. review it if, yeah. if he wants to know. Sure, anyone can go there anytime right. and take a look. Personally, I like it. It makes sense, I think, for $50 or less. Um, I think I think it's a great idea mm -hmm. myself. But. So do you need a motion to move forward with that? I'll make it. A second? Second. Any other questions for Tom? I heard you say I'll make it over here to hear more. <laughs> Tom, thanks for pulling this together. Uh, this, this really gives a good visual. But, uh, so, uh, motion by Tim, seconded by Chad. Uh, any other comments? This is for $50 or less? 50 or less, right? So we're all on board with that? Yep. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. Next on the agenda is number six, operations report from Mr. Manahan. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Did you bring your, bring your spray paint? Uh, it's out in the truck <laughs> right now. I was talking to everybody's hands to make sure they didn't have paint on their hands. Uh, lots of blue and white. Right. Lots of blue and white. So mm -hmm. for those who may not have seen it uh, over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That hit pretty hard. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and Before we get on to your side of the, the, the movie theater, right there. and over over on Kingman King Street, too. Yeah. 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 Behind here, there was some people's trust companies like uh, cameras couldn't pick that up. I don't know, we haven't, they okay. were posted, today, so I'm sure we'll get some of our cameras here, yeah. and that's how we caught them the last time in the parking garage was through that. So, <laughs> state but, office building, do they have any that's right there on the outside? Uh, I don't know if they have any on the back of that or not. Sorry, did before we jump garage? in, the parking garage. No, not that I'm aware of. Before we jump into that, can you just share what your plan is for getting it cleaned up? Yeah. Uh, we will go out and try to remove it with our um, graffiti removal. Matt Moheran uh, will probably take the lead on that, as he has in the past. And if we can't, um, if it doesn't come off of that, we'll go through and paint the areas and keep track of what we spend and the time we put in and then when they are eventually caught, 
they will either reimburse us. Typically, they'll go through court immersion, um, and they will contact us um, for either reimbursement or uh, set them up with community service where they'll have to go out and paint. So, some areas may not be ideal for painting, but right. I mean, over here, I don't think it would be ideal. But. We, that, the stuff we have, the removal works pretty well if you can get to it quickly enough. Um, if it's there for a couple of weeks, it's going to be tough for about. So yeah. Is there some symbolism to this, uh, what they want to do? I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, Self-incrimination, self I'd rather not answer that question. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would think the chief may, they take photos of all that stuff and everything and we'll cross-reference it. So. Mm -hmm. But historically, it's just been individuals. Unfortunately, yeah, the last two times, um, it was kids from other communities that come down and once they're caught, they're very remorseful and think about it and can't understand why they did it, and, but and typically don't repeat it, but it seems like we get new ones every couple of months, so. This stuff looks a little more... Uh, Professional. Yeah. Right. That's too bad. I mean, you know, if they spent their efforts and our balls and stuff, they, mm -hmm. they're talented, but... Okay, so, uh, jump into um, free parking. So two items. We had a request from the merchants to um, provide two hour free parking in the parking garage uh, for a little while now. And we would like to try that out coming into the holiday months. Um, and the way it would work is just a programming switch, a software programming. Um, and we can turn it off anytime we desire. But uh, the first two hours, anybody parks in there is free. If they are in there longer than two hours, uh, they'll be told what they owe starting at, after that two hours. But if they leave during that two hours, the ticket allows them out of the garage. Is this a request for the holidays or is this an I think it's probably a permanent. It's an effort to try to get people uh, to use the garage that are come down, coming down shopping, as well as to try to get some of the employees of the establishments to use the garage and get used to it and realize that it's a safe place and a convenient place. And, First um, the employees are going to be there longer than two hours. Possibly. And we're not expecting this to, be, to hurt revenue a whole lot because sure. it's, it, the two hours is pretty yeah. minimal. Two hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just another effort to try to attract shoppers downtown during the holiday season and get, again, people used to using the garage. How will you promote that if it is approved? Uh, we'll put it out on our social media. We'll probably do some things with the merchants to get them to spread the word amongst their customers as well. How soon, how soon could this be in effect? Uh, it's just calling ITS and having them program it for us. So and some signage. Right. We put up additional signage at the entrance. So. I think we're going to, at the bottom of the quiet your ride signs, so we can just put them over. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you have one of these signs on your yard. Yeah, quiet your ride. Quiet your ride, use a parking garage <laughs> instead. Right. We, we've talked for ages about how you, it, to have a good parking program, you've got to have a system of incentives and disincentives. and. <clears throat> If, if we want people to leave the spaces on Main Street open for short-term parking for, for the customers of the businesses in the downtown, we've got to get more of the cars off of Main Street. And if you, you know, give people a, a free chance to park in the garage, I think that's a way to, to retrain some behavior and maybe open up a few of those spaces. Um, and I know the merchants will be very, very happy, including a couple who live very close to me. So I'm very happy to hear about this. and. Right. Excited to try it out. One of the other um, pieces of this that the merchants have requested as well, and we aren't, I don't think we're ready to go there yet, but we'll, we're going to wait and see how this works, is raising the ticket price. Right now it's $15 uh, for a parking ticket on Main Street, so looking to raise that maybe to 20 or 25 mm -hmm. is another disincentive to, so. for the people that violate it on a daily basis mm -hmm. to. Um, Used Why would uh, somebody who has the opportunity to park two hours on Main Street now uh, remove themselves from that setting to go into the garage for two hours? Well, there's different parking all over Main Street. Yeah. There's 30 minute, there's um, two, hour. two hour down on Lake, and uh, it's a good point. It's just a yeah. incentive that they're trying to put out there to get 
If I were a business on Main Street, and I'm not, but I'm a business in the, in, in the downtown, and I have plenty of parking, I would, I would want to pay for my customers to park, to come and see me. It would be worth it for me to do that. And I don't know how sophisticated the software is, but we talked about it when we were talking, talking about downtown, to be able to validate. I do that we, when I go to Burlington. We have that now. We have that ability now. So we have, like, Twaits has purchased validation stickers. Yeah. When someone comes in there and dines, they bring their parking pass with them, their parking receipt. He puts a sticker on it. When they go to leave, it's validated. Yeah, I, I love that idea. I think that's a, I think that's a great idea. I, mean, yeah. I, I didn't know we were doing it. Yeah. I, I know that, they do that, it. That's an option that they, they, yeah. some have chosen to do that. Yeah. Others have not. Um, there, we also have the validation of, a, of the parking ticket still. So if they have a customer that comes in and say eats at Nemo's and then goes to artists in residence and spends more than two hours there and they get a ticket on their car, they can bring that ticket back into either Mimos or artists in residence. They put a sticker on it saying it's validated, gets mailed to the police department, they check as long as they haven't had another one validated that year on their registration, it gets voided. So that program is still in place. Is that good for me too? Mm -hmm. So oh, someone someone parks in front of my office and gets a ticket uh, for being there too long, yeah. I can I can say bring that into me. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we would we would expect your billing would cover that ticket. I, you know, I won't cover the ticket, but I would like to do something to get the people to be able to park there. Right. And, and I think that's worth it, to yeah. me anyway. No doubt. It's worth it for someone to walk through my door and, do, and utilize my, my time and services for what? A few bucks and parking? Yeah, those aren't the ones we are obviously wanting to enforce the parking on. It's the people that work there, that park in front of their neighbor's business, and yeah. Yeah, I know. takes away that spot from their neighbor for the entire day. Yeah. So, Mario, are you... Uh, you are looking for a motion? Yes, support to... Can you put, can, uh, when we do this, do we want to put a time frame on this for through the holidays, see how it goes, and then revisit it? We can. So we can just make it, and if we need to, we can revisit it. Yeah, we, I, I can bring you back information on it, see how much of it's being used. And we can run some reports on that. When I say we, I mean Kristen can. <laughs> uh, I'll move that we approve the plan to make two hours of free parking available in the garage and maybe we'll check back in after the holidays and see if it's working. Motion by Mike, seconded by Chad. Any other questions for Marty? Comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Uh, second up is a consideration uh, to approve a plan to transition out of our current winter parking van to a more of an alert system and have it um, in place only when we really need it. Right now, the way it works is the winter, winter parking van goes into effect, I think it's December 15th through the end of <coughs> March. And if you are parked on the street during that time period, you'll get a warning the first time. And if you're parked there again and the police come through and see it and run the plate and the warning has already been issued, you'll be issued a ticket. And then if we're in the middle of a storm and we're removing snow, you'll be towed. And you could be towed, the way our current ordinance is written, you could be towed on the night that it's not even snowing and it's halfway east now. And so what we would like to do is go to this Look, look at going to this uh, Beacon <coughs> program, and what we would do is put one probably on North Main, South Main, Fairfield Street, Lake Street, and probably somewhere in the Kingman Street area. We'd be able to activate those, so if we're removing snow in the downtown that night, we activate, we put it out on social media, um, and we've got some other programs that we can alert people on, um, and let them know that it's in effect. If you're parked on the street tonight, you will be towed. What about in neighborhoods? So that's where we would go with the social media and hopefully common sense would uh, prevail that if it's snowing out and they see our trucks out plowing, that they will get the vehicles off the street. We had gone through last year, we had some areas like Isham Avenue, we had one car that would always park on the side, they couldn't make it up there, they would park on the side, we couldn't get our truck through for fear of running into the side of that car. So. We we're always getting calls saying, hey, you haven't plowed ice in yet. We, we need you to well, We aren't going to risk damaging our equipment in their vehicle to try to get by, especially on a hill section like that. 
So I think we've got that one taken care of. We put up signs on Nation to prevent parking on street parking there. I've had a conversation with that lady who, and I've told her, if you can't get up to Hysham, you're better off parking on High Street. We'll plow around you on High. You're gonna move it in the morning, we'll get back in there and clean up on High. Um, but for the most part, they're really, the only time you really need it is when, when you're getting a lot of snow when you're out there plowing. Um, and Alan's, uh, you know, his, when, when he was doing it, he never wanted to tow cars, and we don't want to tow cars. But at the end of the day, when you're on Main Street and you're trying to clean up the Main Street block, and you've got a car, car parked in front of 84 Main like we did last year several times, you end up plowing around that, and then that car moves, and then another car pulls in, and you can never get back to that spot because other cars are filled in the other ones, and then you end up having a uh, frozen pile of snow there for a week until you're able to get in there. But, but you're saying neighborhoods can cars could park on Messenger or Brainerd if it's not snow. Yeah, and as long as they're out of there within 24 hours where we can get back through and, and plow, we're okay with that. But it, when this, when these lights are flashing, and even in the neighborhoods, that if they're far, they've got to get their <coughs> cars off the street in, in a driveway or the neighbor's driveway to... But our, our concentration is going to be on getting downtown cleaned up. And I know this may be overkill, but would it make sense to uh, maybe put a couple of lights, say, on, on, on Fairfield, on Upper Weldon, on Upper Newton, where cars are going to be coming up and down from the neighborhood, <coughs> and they're going to see those lights, and they're going to know they need to. Yeah, I mean, you could. We're, we're looking at a couple of different systems. This system that's in front of you now is just a beacon light with an antenna. Right. Um, but we're trying to get it to the point where we don't have to have an antenna on every one that they'll be able to communicate between without having that. Um, and the trouble with the neighborhoods is when you start doing that, I think, and then the guy on Diamond Street says, well, yeah, you had one on Uncle Walton, but I didn't see it from Diamond Street. I didn't, you know? Yeah. So it's a slippery slope, no pun intended here. Um, so if, it's, uh, is the city sign, has the city registered for VT alert? So yes. that's a free service that we can register for and that people can register for. And I get notifications all the time, all winter long, that the Burlington mm -hmm. is in, it is in yep. fact that night. Right. And that's free. It's free for us, it's free for everybody, and it, it pops up as a text oh, message right. on your phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we got rid of color red because of VT alert, yeah. right? Yeah. So we put it on VT alert. Right. If you, and it just advertised people to to yeah. register for VT alert. That makes sense. So the other thing I would I would add is there's been a lot of um, conversation on social media and everything about our about our towing program. So uh, we have several tow companies that are on the list. We rotate through the list of who who we call, and it's next up on the list. And with this, we tow them to public works. So nobody is charged for storage. All they have to do is pay the, so the towing bill. They go pay the towing bill at PD. They call us, we release the car out of public works. Um, and it's about a $100 tow bill. Um, but they're not towed to Swanton, they're not towed to Highgate, they're not charged for storage because they couldn't get it over the weekend. If they call us and we usually have somebody around, we can release the car. So, uh, it went pretty well, we, we instituted that towing last year before winter and we towed probably half a dozen cars down there and it seemed to work out pretty well. So. Make a motion to approve the plan to transition from automatic winter parking van to flashing sign and electronic notification plan. Second. Second by Jim. Motion by Tim. Second by Jim. Any other questions for Marty? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Marty. Can I ask Marty about one unrelated thing, <laughs> real quick? Okay. Um, who who might be responsible uh, or be able to to help with um, cleaning up the brick wall that's been tagged for years as you're heading into the Aldous Hill playground from probably your mayor, Mayor Smith. You your think mayor. we? You think maybe a couple of us could get up there and no, what to, uh, we've had it before, so I'm on the Aldous Hill board. Okay. Uh, Where is it? The brick wall that you access up behind the what was the Governor Smith in. So when that trail goes in, there's a wall, a oh, stone, a brick wall. So we have uh, Aldous Hill has hired 
Matt uh, Mulherin and Charlie Sargent off hours, um, and they get a pressure washer, and they, I didn't realize they got bad again. Uh, so they go up with a pressure washer, and they, as Marty alluded to earlier, they have the chemicals that they're, they put to it. So I will make a note to get with Matt and Charlie. I knew if I just said something, one of the fine gentlemen would, would yeah. know what the- I did, I did not realize it got bad again. How am I gonna know who loves who? Social media. Actually, one of the tags says, do you love me? Facebook. Are you Facebook. So is it vulgar? No, that no, matters. No, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just, early on, years ago it was bad. Yeah, it's, there's nothing vulgar. It's just a mess up there. Okay. And, okay. You know, it's it's a it's not a great look. No, I right. think the no, traffic right. up there it seems like more and more people are walking yeah. their dogs, taking a jog up there. It's really well, nice. Actually. Park on that. Go that drive. So, and just so that, so Marty, are you saying that no one can park on National Ave to access all this hill now because oh, of the top? Yeah. But down lower they could. Well, we we put those signs up there for anticipation of the winter parking that took place last year. Because I think so on the if trail. somebody parks up there like today on a beautiful day like today, parks up there and walks up in there, I don't think they're going to get a ticket. Okay. They're not going to get involved. Because I think I think Trail Hub the the app for it shows uh, Isham as as an access. Point. I think there is isn't there an area at the very top. No, it's pretty tight really. up there. Is yeah. yeah. there the land to put a trailhead up there? To put parking up there? At the end of that, the end of Aisha who owns, you know. You, you would have to extend Aisha Mab into the woods. Who owns couple. the woods? All the so? All the so. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it always struck me as that we ought to build a trailhead up there, right? I mean, if, yeah, if, we, if we There's build a trailhead for be. pedestrian, but there's no parking. Yeah, to, to yeah. Access. So we should build parking for it. Right. Right? Yeah. So. Thank you, Marty. Moving on to the city manager's report. His, he's thinking big today, so we're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> so, um, local, local option tax. So there's a memo in your, uh, in your packet. There's, um, there's been a lot of dialogue across the state about this. I'm on the BLCT board. Um, there's a sense uh, among some local officials that um, this window might be closing, uh, the ability to have a local option tax, um, because so many communities are getting on the bus. Um, and some of the transformative effects that we've realized through tax income and finance and other communities have realized uh, through enactment of a local options tax. From a uh, technical perspective, 1% uh, uh, is available and collected through the state. They take a uh, processing fee uh, and then distribute a 70, 30, 70% goes to the community in which it's generated. 30% goes to other communities via the statewide payment low tax <coughs> program. Um, but what you see is, is um, this is a pretty, this is a, this is a pretty compelling list, I think, of other communities who are similarly situated to us. Um, Barry City reported, according to the tax department, has adopted one. I think they get their numbers. Uh, just read in uh, the Essex Reporter that Essex Town and Essex Junction uh, are uh, lining up to get theirs uh, adopted. Goes to the voters. Uh, the voters adopted in there uh, as a charter amendment. The um, where the real money seems to be is in the general sales tax. Uh, I'm told that you know um, people tend to think of it as a as a retail tax, but what in effect happens is um, the big money generators uh, are things like cable bills uh, in town. And um, we don't know what those are in St. Albans City. Um, but for example, in St. Albans Town, Walmart is not, it is, you know, not the majority player, it's less than half. Um, the, uh, the, well, the big money is in the general sales tax. Um, some other communities 
have levied 1% on rooms, meals, and alcohol. Uh, as far as I can tell, that seems to be a package, whether you can parse it out further and just do one of those. Um, we haven't researched that piece of it yet. The um, last thing I would mention is this is collected at the wholesale level. Um, so whereas right now ours is collected at the retail level, so now our, our you know, de minimis alcohol tax, tax, which generates a fair bit of dialogue, people complain about it because it shows up in their bills. Um, it doesn't generate a whole lot of money for us. I want to say it's um, the 10 grand range. Um, yeah, I can't remember from the budget. Um, so I, I think it's something that's worth looking into. Um, the other data point that's created my film that we should look into it is of a meeting in St. Thomas Town on a number of uh, capital projects recently. Um, and I realized in that conversation that their local option tax is generating so much, they're not using their debt to service debt, they're paying cash for what would typically be capital finance items. Yeah, the notes. That's it. Um, quick question. Um, cars is not applicable to cars, right? <laughs> That's right. 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 Is, is there anything else? Oh, that, uh, yeah, I thought you were talking about the economist. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why it doesn't apply to cars, but because I, I hear so that car, cars have a purchase, they're part of the purchase and use tax, and they're taxed completely separately from the retail sales. It's a DMV tax. Right, the Delta is not in that. One percent real estate, right? Not in there. there. Um, I think there's probably a number of things that are yeah. some things that are excluded and some things that are included. That we'd be surprised what that list is. And do I understand it correctly that if you purchase something at Lowe's and it's delivered into the city, then that would be included in that? My understanding is it's destination based. Right. And if it's delivered, it's added on. If it's yeah. picked up, online sales. Yeah. You know, I haven't done a deep dive into it, Jim, but I think that's where the destination yep. piece comes in, is for online sales. Yeah. I remember when the town instituted theirs, we were getting calls from online retailers who wanted to make sure they had the right boundaries, uh -huh. so I have a hunch that right. we would get a piece of Amazon and stuff, too. I understand, but I mean, we're talking Lowe's, which actually has a store in Vermont, but there's like a, there's a lot of online retailers that aren't even in Vermont, and that's why I was asking that. It was, yeah. I was yeah. distinguishing. So a couple of years ago, there was a big uh, national federal court case, um, the Wayfair decision, and now all the online retailers have to pay all the state and local it's, sales taxes. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. How, didn't, I thought South Burlington uh, turned down a local option tax in favor, and they went towards rental car fees yeah, or something. Two like phases that. to it. The rental car one passed. Yeah. <laughs> what was the other one that did not pass? It was. Well, I, where I think stand, things stand in South Burlington is uh, <clears throat> they, they proposed to amend their charter to add, in addition to what you're seeing here, they were going to add another one right. just on the rental cars. And that passed the voters, but the legislature turned it down as a charter amendment. So uh, there's, there's a very clear path for 1% local option. South Burlington was trying to get out of that lane and do something um, innovative, uh, which responded to their local need. Um, the legislature stopped. So. so why do we need to do this? What's what's it going to do? Is it going to lower property taxes? Is it going to uh, get us something that we don't have now? It diversifies our revenue sources. Right now. Every time we come in for a project, the question is, what does it do to the tax rate, right? Because mm -hmm. that's our only revenue source. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't know what the number is, I don't know, but theoretically, well, not theoretically, by definition, diversifying our revenue streams reduces pressure on the property tax, it reduces pressure on the stormwater um, fee that's embedded in the water and wastewater bills, uh, and 
and you know, there's a couple of capital projects that are in the offing that it could be targeted towards, um, or it. Uh, I think uh, one discussion we had at one point was addressing the a lot of the downtown amenities, the flowers, the banners. Um, Man, it's, you can do whatever you want with it, you know, but it, um, I'd encourage us not to be, to embed Specific. the uses within the charter because then the legislature is in charge, right. but for the council to adopt the policy about how, uh, but I, you know, I think, I think all of that is a conversation yet to come, you know, I, I don't think we have enough information. Uh, yeah, you know, we need a lot of information. So I, I would, I'd make a motion to authorize to, to research it, um, the local option tax, but uh, we're a long ways away from considering adopting anything. I second that. And can this, would you include Jeff Carr? You, you want Jeff Carr to do the analysis, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, his, his firm has the expertise in it and, you know, has done a number of them. You know, I'm not ready to do it. If you guys think that this is not something you want any part of, we got a lot better things to do with our time. If you, so, that's why. Well, I mean, in the end, taxpayers will run it anyway, right? Yeah. 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 That's what, you know. But we have, a, we have an obligation to give them a fair opportunity to assess whether or not this is a good move for the city or not. No, I agree. I agree. And so, by doing that, we should authorize the research that we need to have. Yeah, so I think we, we have to do our due diligence, yeah. that's the research, yes. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. So, Tim, can you restate your motion? I'll make a motion to authorize to uh, uh, authorize the staff to research the uh, um, local option tax. I'll second the Any other question? Amendment, amendment to the original motion, is that what it is? No, uh, no, that was his original motion. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the original motion. Yeah, that is the original motion. We will leave, yeah. uh, with the understanding, we'll leave that research up to the discretion of the city manager on how we get to that. So, okay. any other questions or comments for city manager? Are we going to, is, is that discussion? You're, you're, ask, you're asking for a discussion right yeah. now? Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone, any comments, any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, authorizing Don to move forward with some homework, um, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Uh, Congress in Maine. Uh, Congress in Maine, uh, Marty, please uh, augment as, as needed. Uh, we had a couple of slowdowns uh, related to underground utilities. Uh, we had a heck of a time getting. Um, Comcast and, and Vermont Gas uh, and uh, whatever now that you're not power. Consolidated. Consolidated, yeah, thank you. Um, we'll talk about herding cats. Um, uh, and then in addition to that, um, we were waiting on a sticker for our uh, dirty dirt hauler to get from the state of New York to be on New York's roads. Um, so all kinds of just, you know, um, minutia that was causing things to slow down uh, for weeks on end. We're back on track. Um, we've been working like the dick until the last couple of days. Uh, strategy is to get, um, to use all of the dirty dirt on site uh, so that any that has to go off site is as clean as possible. We're trying to get it to come back. Uh, we uh, continue to be uh, pushing hard to have the podium, which is on the back of the site that supports the two residential buildings. Um, we're still trying to get that up um, by mid-December so that the residential projects can start. Excuse me, before that, um, we expect to see steel going up on the uh, commercial building uh, on the front of the site. We're prepping for a closing of those guys at the end of the month. That's why the declaration uh, is before you is the next uh, action item. Uh, so, it's been, it's been a whirlwind, um, and uh, we're, we're past the delays, I think. Move. You want to add to that? No, I think that sums it up. Our biggest piece was uh, getting an easement from Consolidated to bring the gas in from the bank, as opposed to the original design was to come in off Congress, and we were going to bury the line there. But Vermont Gas said if they didn't want it any deeper than three feet, 
So what we would have had to do is uh, three quarters of the way through the project, bring it back up. We would have buried it three feet where it is now, but the final grade is going to be about six feet higher than that. So we would have had to replace it again. So it was worth waiting for Consolidated to give us the easement. To, but it took a, about three weeks to get that done. So you was in Consolidated because of the building on the corner. Made it. Right, it was there when we were talking about. So once buildings, once the building starts going up, it's going to start. It's going to go pretty a lot quicker pace. Yeah, I mean the the slowest and the hardest part is the site work. Yeah. And, and we're you know frankly we intend to be out of it on uh, Water State by the end of the calendar year. Yeah. Did have a uh, constituent tell me that she was going to fall down in the pit and break her leg, and then there was going to have to be a pit beautification committee, and that she was going to chair it. <laughs> so if anyone watches Parks and Rats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. And the next item grows uh, right at right out of that. Um, uh, we are declaring a condominium as part of the project. Uh, what I direct your attention to is this site plan. Uh, it's a little hard to read um, up on the condominium notes. Uh, we are unit one, which includes all land within the project, uh, and uh, includes a grant of easement to units two, three, and four to install and maintain foundation elements and underground utilities. Unit two is the commercial building on the front of the site, and they benefit for the easement for parking and access to main, uh, access Unit one for parking and access and maintenance from Congress Street, and also uh, easement to install and maintain foundation elements and underground utilities. Very similar language on units three and four, which are the two housing units. There's been a tremendous conversation and coordination around um, what's called the podium, uh, which is the foundation of that the two residential buildings sit on. Um, we are building that. We're not going to own it. They're paying us for it. Um, but the state um, fire marshal and building inspector had a hard time wrapping his head around that whole thing uh, and wanted to make sure that you know uh, how to, who owns who owns what, where do the sprinklers run, how do you do you have rights to fix the sprinkler uh, if you need to go onto somebody else's property uh, and. Uh, what are common elements? Is the sprinkler a common element or is that uh, separate? We've gone to great lengths to try and maintain everything as separate as possible and minimize the common elements. Have that be kind of the last resort. Uh, that's why we own all the land and the rest of them just have building rights. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of detail in here. Uh, we can do a deeper dive uh, as interested. The resolution resolves that the council approve the execution by the mayor uh, and the filing and recording by the city manager of the master condominium, uh, <laughs> which is in the declaration. We envision um, over the next week or so, there's going to be changes that we have to true up. For instance, um, um, as late as this afternoon, there's a discussion about um, where the line of demarcation is between unit one and units three and four, and whether it includes the vertical walls uh, or whether it kicks in at the ceiling level. And some of that will be influenced by what the state permit, uh, state regulator signs off on. And so uh, this resolution contemplates that the city manager um, will be authorized to make those true up to make sure everything's consistent um, but not have to come back to the council again so that we're able to close at the end of October. Uh, the third and final document is uh, all the language uh, which implements it, uh, creates the association and the common interest community under Vermont laws to regular common meetings. Um, you're expecting us to vote on this tonight? Well, I'm asking you to consider voting on it tonight. The alternative okay. is... The, re the reason I'm asking yeah. is we didn't see this until today. 
It's 40 some odd pages long. I was working. I couldn't make copies of that work of this thing. The copy I have here tonight shows two thirds of the page, but not the other third. And I just think, uh, why, why, why do, I'm asking that we table the vote until we have a chance to read this document. I don't care if we do a special meeting or just a phone, I don't care. I just, I'm not prepared to vote yes on this yet. Tim, did you read this? Yep. Are you good? I'm familiar with them. I've done them. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Is this a new adventure for the city? Um, this type of regime within the city where the city's still going to have ownership of something? But I think it's, yeah, there's nothing. Uh, and the, the firm that prepared it are, are, know how to do these two. So, yeah. <clears throat> I don't see a problem with it. Anyone else express Jim's concerns? I mean, I express the concerns, but I mean, I'm, I'm not a real estate lawyer, so what I read, two thirds of it goes, yeah. it seems like cookie cutter language to me, so. All this, all these declarations do is they give all the condominium owners a fair opportunity to see what it is they're getting and what type of responsibilities they have and how, how the organization is going to get handled. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's what this document is. Mm -hmm. So as yeah. far as operation for the city, it, it doesn't mean as much as it does for the uh, for the people that are going to actually be there. So and it can be amended. Yeah, it can be amended anyway. Yeah. And everyone and usually these documents are protections so that someone in, in a condominium association doesn't do something that is so out of the norm that it, uh, it decreases the value of the other condominiums that are there or, or, or interferes with their enjoyment of the condominium. And I don't think that would ever be the case here, not with a class of tenants that are gonna be there. They're not gonna let anything happen that's gonna destroy what, they've, what they're putting money into. And so if something goes wrong, the dumpster issue, uh, everyone will be, I'm sure everyone would happily uh, amend it to so that it looks presentable and right and correct. We've got 50% of the shares, so. Um, I mean, you know, Jim, I apologize for not getting into your, uh, my analysis of it was, notwithstanding Tim, none of us are, Real estate lawyers. This is what we hired. I have been, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. because and of that, I like to read the documents yeah. before I yeah. vote on them. And, um, uh, so, but I, I know I understand everything Tim is saying. I agree with him, but mm -hmm. I'd like to be, have the time or chance to read it. And that's, I guess, maybe because I'm a lawyer. That's why I'm being such a pain in the ass about that. But you know, I thought it's just sort of breathing life into what we've been talking about for months. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I mean, you know, that's, that's just my opinion. Somebody can make a motion. Well, anyone can make a motion. I'm just, well, just, just thinking out loud before we'll we make be a motion. Would there, would there be any uh, problem if we uh, made a motion um, <clears throat> to accept the declaration? Um, and uh, if Jim has any concerns over the next uh, what, 24 hours or 48 hours uh, to bring them to our attention, and we'll. We'll repair him at that point in time, or we'll address that at that point in time, so that he I, does get a chance I, to read it. I am fine with that. But I don't think he'll have a problem with it. I, I, we'll do that. I mean, or we just vote. It looks like it's going to be six to one anyway. Well, I, no, I, I don't. It, it doesn't matter if it was fifty to one. If you haven't had a chance to read the document, I, I would doesn't want you. Doesn't matter. I, mean, want you know, to I can that. say nay. I mean, you know, but, uh, um, but I think I think what Tim's saying, Jim, is it gives you an opportunity I mean, yes, to I add agree. something to it if need if you feel it needed to. And I hear you, I, and I, I don't want to hold you up. That's what I'm saying. If it's something that my, you want to, my question forward, to you would be do the vote, but. Uh, my question to you would be, would 48 hours be enough for you to review it? Probably. Okay, so I would- If I get a better copy, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so Tim, I would so encourage you to that. place that motion. I'll make a motion to Every adopt page. the condominium declaration for Congress and Main Street redevelopment as outlined in the resolution subject to a 48 hour review for uh, Jim to take a look at it and bring any objections forward. Sure it looks like that. Mm -hmm. um, is there a second on that? Second. 
Motion by Tim, second by Chad. Uh, Dominic, that doesn't mess you up. No, it's and it gives us time to react if Jim finds anything. Yeah, something. Yeah, right. She's just got wait two days. Yeah, no, we're good. All right. Okay. okay. So, uh, any, okay. any other questions on the motion or comments? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Jim will review and get back to uh, shoot an email to Dom or to all of us stating that you are good or not. can do that. I can do a sh I can shoot it to everybody. Thank you for that, Jim. Thank, thank you for the consideration. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Tim, just for a second. <coughs> I did. Um, Two things I want to, uh, when we talked about Congress in Maine, and, and we just passed over, I know, but um, um, can you give a timeline? I, that's a question I get a lot is what's going on? Can you sort of lay it out in big picture? Does the concrete's going to be poured in a month, time, you know, give or take? Um, so what? by the end of the calendar year, you'll see. First thing that's going to happen is the commercial building on Main Street. Steel's going to start going up on that mid November. Shortly thereafter, the back of the site's going to get started with the concrete and steel for the podium. The both buildings uh, have a 12 month construction schedule. So Sometime between the fall of 2020 and the end of 2020, both buildings will be finished. There's some coordination with CCV about when they're able to move and align that with the academic calendar. Um, so that probably lines up more like in January, um, but that building uh, would likely uh, be done um, within 2020 and not into 2021. And then once CCV is added, we start the renovations on the public safety building. Uh, and that's at least a six month process. But, you know, the, um, if people, uh, yeah, I think every, a lot of folks are really concerned that we're going to be in the next Bremerton with enough solar hole. And they want to know when do they. Or Newport. Yeah. Newport, I don't oh, think. They're not seeing any progress right now, so they're getting a little worried. Yeah. Um, were they out there this weekend? Yes, they were. Yeah, 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 they were, they were the last out. few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah they were out there this weekend. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think between now and the end of the calendar year, people's fears should subside. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, I, we were dealing with that minutia, and now we're rock and roll. Good. Yeah. It was funny because when we had the building on the, the, the little construction building on Main Street, everyone's complaining it's on Main Street. As soon as it was gone, oh my God, now we're going to have another hole with no one. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of interesting. Okay. It, it doesn't help that two other municipalities in Vermont have holes. big holes in their downtown. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the big difference there, so we've been traveling around the state telling our story. The big difference is we own all the land. <laughs> so. We're in the driver's seat in a way that none of the others two are. And that's a big, you know, that was a good move on our part. Uh, and the council wants us to take that risk for Texas. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, if the truth be known, once it went idle, the, the mayor demanded that things uh, pick up. Truth, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to get into my report. Um, before I do that, I, 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 I probably should have done this at the beginning, but uh, over the last month, we've lost um, some great uh, St. Albans City citizens, uh, starting with Mark Reynolds, who was lifelong, lived on Lake Street, Jim Brulette, who was uh, active in the Legion and for many, many years, and then I guess uh, for all the people who grew up here, uh, Claudette Boswick as well, uh, French teacher. Um, and I would, uh, if there's anyone else that you want to add to that, but I'd like to take a moment of silence for all of them. Um, you know, I think they were all part of the fabric of St. Albans and um, 
you know, they're all, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're all, many, most of them were good friends of all, to all of us. So if we can take a moment to, to for them. Please. Thank you. Uh, my list is a little lengthy, so I'll go last. Chad's usually pretty short, so why don't we go with Chad first? Are we doing other bits? Do you want to do, do, you want to do the candidates first? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so uh, with Claudette's passing, uh, there was a vacancy on the Collins Pearly board that uh, Claudette was the city representative, and they were looking to fill that. Uh, we did have a nomination with Jesse Remlard, who uh, lives on Brainerd Street, is active uh, in youth football with her kids and lacrosse, works at immigration. Um, I think most of us know her or yeah. have had experience with her. What a her. great choice. What a I great think choice. she will do a great job. So I've spoken to her. She is on board with everything that the job entails. So I would um, entertain a motion to uh, nominate Jesse Remlard to the Collins Pearly Board. Moved. Motion by Tim. Is there a second? I'll second. I, I respect Tim's opinion. So, yeah. Second by Jim. Both Tim's. I respect both your opinions. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? I just, I just, before I go, yeah, I just want to make sure everyone, I do serve on board with Jesse, so as long as there's no issues, I'm no. okay. Okay. It is a non pain board. You're okay. So. Mm -hmm. I'm but gonna, knowing that, you're still voting yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 if, you, if, you, if you have reservations, you might be the most informed person here. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Um, I think, uh, did this get nine months? Didn't get the packet. Kristen was sick. We were in our top of our game on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> um, I attended the Vermont League of Cities and Town Town Fair last week, mm -hmm. and uh, White and Burke had a um, had a booth there. And one of the pieces that they're handing out, um, um, probably would the city would be hard pressed to come up with a better piece to promote St. Albans and what we've done. I'll pass this around, but um, on the front, uh, when it talks about downtown revitalization, it has a hotel and uh, the state office building, and then. Um, the back side talks all about St. Albans and an aerial view of uh, the parking garage and uh, the hotel. So I guess I was interesting. Um, you know, I think that's great publicity for what, what has happened here over the years. Um, so that's about all I had. So Chad, we'll come back to you. Do you want to start? Okay. I uh, just want to thank uh, Public Works folks. Uh, I know they've been out late because, you know, um, out. Uh, I was a little disappointed about the paving, but that's not the uh, that's not public works. But uh, Ma yeah, Marty assured me that at the worst case they would go with their plows raised down <laughs> south down. <laughs> so I felt better about that. Uh, Marty did raise the art wall earlier, and we had talked about having one in Holton Park earlier, and I uh, was kind of hoping that would happen before fall, and it hasn't happened. I just don't know what the, what the hold up is. I thought it got all the approvals and... Was uh, the Parks Commission going to weigh in on that, Chip? They already have. Um, last thing we're looking for the design and just uh, seeing if we can get the material materials to put up. We didn't yeah. work on that. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, do we know what's up with... Have we made any progress with the sensor at the top of Newman, those lights? He, I know the last time I heard from he ordered some parts for that. Okay. So I'm not sure. I'll have to check and see if he has fixed those, replaced them, or. Okay. They weren't working the other day. I just. Okay. That's why. I know parts are probably hard to come by too. So. You mean on Upper Newman? Yeah. That, yeah. 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 Uh, what I found is that if you pull, if you pull all the way forward on Upper Newman, it doesn't send to you. But if you pull back a bit. It does. So they're working. It's just a matter of where they're aimed, I think. Okay. Because coming up on Lower Newman, it doesn't send you at all. So it'll cycle, even though there's no one there. The main street lights right. will, will go red. I think that's what he was. Yeah. And just it'll just sit there. Yeah, okay. And then um, the only other thing is um, 
did we, did someone give us a house on Maple Street, the corner, of, I want to say it's Maple and LaSalle? LaSalle. Roughly. Yeah. They didn't give it to us. They didn't give it to us. They, but well, we got a pretty yeah, cheap deal. Yeah. Um, is there any way that we can get a list of all the properties that the city owns? Because I, I think it's pretty numerous at this point. We can probably give it to you right now. Okay. Yeah. Right? So we got that one. Yeah. Mason. Um, Mason. 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 Seven Mason. Ninety nine high. And there's there's really four. Federal. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> so Federal Street, yep. LaSalle, yep. ninety nine high, and Mason. Okay. I and think then, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Piece well, right public works garage. Yeah. Carl Street School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Bonda. I was just wondering about like in a residential area. Yeah, that's it. This yeah. So do we have any plans for that one um, down by Marie? Is there any, because it has a house on it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think the council goals and objectives, paraphrasing here says, move those properties, right? Or do something with them. Yeah, right. so that's, that's what we've been doing. So, okay. um, so we've been using, so we learned from the, Diamond Street experience when we use the tech center that there needs to be somebody working for us overseeing their work as type of like a clerk of the works type of thing. Yep. Um, so Jim Cameron's doing that. We're still using the tech center wherever possible. But Jim's directives were get Federal Street and one other one. Uh, so there was a, uh, well, LaSalle is scheduled to be demolished. Yeah, so We've gone in and done the testing for lead and asbestos. We needed that. That's going to probably be demolished by the end of the year. Okay. Is that the one across from the Miami parking lot? Uh, Kitty Corner. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, it's Kitty Corner. Corner. Yeah. That was no, it's diagonally across. There's a right across from uh, Colony Square. Colony Square, yes. Yeah. 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 Is that a little bit yeah. Rob place? Yes. Yeah. 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 So we're working with the school and the, and the gym's directive was focusing on Nason and um, Federal Street get them to the market by the spring. Okay. And we're on track with that with Federal yeah. Street. I think Nason Street has slowed down a little bit because of the academic uh, participation. Yep. Um, and 99 High, we've... I see that one. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So. And we get calls. I've got a couple of people right now interested in Nason Street that if we wanted to sell yeah. with a condition on what the house was that was built there, yeah. um, I think we could move pretty quickly on that if we wanted to. Okay. And we just sold artists and residents. So. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, what that's was the point? Huh? What was your point? We're buying too much? No, I was just wondering what's up with all these properties. What was up with that? Well, remember, when we take those over, we can put conditions on the property that will always be there forever and ever. Absolutely. You know, and it, it is usually better than what it was before we took it over. Yeah. And I think that was the impetus well, why we all agreed that we're going to take some of these That's properties right. over so that we could condition them so that they'll be the appropriate residence or the appropriate lot for the area. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if the one on the one down by Marie, I want to call it Maple Street, uh, doesn't doesn't sell. I mean, that that's for a little park or something. Right. It's a great, or a little dog oh, park or something. It's a great location. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Right there across from Colonial, which is for sale. Yeah. And all the kids in that neighborhood would be a great little area for a little park. Okay. Just a thought. Okay. Marie. Um, I just had a comment on how nice the flowers all around the city look when they put the dark mulch down and then they put all the, the mums. It's it's absolutely beautiful. You take like a weekend like you just had with the, the sun shining bright and all the color. It, the, the city just looks gorgeous. So, very nice job there. Yeah. James. I'm going to have to do uh, it. I'll go in uh, increments. First of all, this was great. I loved it until I read on the back. White Burke worked on behalf of the town of St. Albans, Vermont, <laughs> to establish a tax and financing district. Can we tell White Burke that we are the city of St. Albans? It's hired in a. That's uh, interesting that you know the. Um, 
What's most interesting to me in that is the places they've opened up an office. Um, so it's um, Asheville and, what, and uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah. 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 And so what is, uh, so you know they're they're beginning to have a you know certainly a, a, a large regional presence of what people are most interested in as they're opening these offices is these big public private partnerships that are attracting investment to the places that otherwise wouldn't occur. Right, right. That was that was really hard to still. I mean, yeah. it so they hired the a new time. director of business development. She's been on about six months. She's doing an incredible job, but she just you know we'll get that fixed. I have had more than one resident of the, of the city, including one very important constituent that happens to live in the house I live in, that um, <laughs> want to see the sign put back at the top of Kingman Street for the no left turn. Um, the one that we used to get in the park, the big one that people could see, yeah. because they're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. And she almost got wiped out one day with somebody turning left there, and uh, she's, she drives a lot more than I do, and there's a lot of people that are turning left. Now that she's retired, she has all this time to, <laughs> to look at all this stuff. Yeah. You know, but, uh, so that was, that's a request. Maybe she should run for that walk. <laughs> I mean, if you just, she can shoot now. If you would be kind enough to take my pass now, yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to be now with uh, wow. with Marie's discussion about how beautiful the flowers look. But look how pretty it is. Yeah, we can yeah. keep passing the. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a picture of the hotel here too, but the, uh, I took this picture when I was at the end of the courthouse driveway. My car, the nose of my car was right at the travel portion of the road, trying to look down Lake Street to see what was coming. You can't do it in a car. I don't have a truck, I don't have an SUV, I have a sedan. Those flower pots are too high, they block the view, they need to be moved. I did, before I could see down Lake Street, I had the nose of my car well into that, into that lane. That's an accident waiting to happen. This is the only place that I'm aware of where, there's the, where the bump outs affect the driveway, the public driveway. Do you think that the two city, yellow ones in the parking lot there? Removing the two yellow ones and the one in front would have helped? Would have I don't helped. know. Been, uh, maybe moving the three in the front, yeah, yeah maybe that yes. would help. Um, or, sm or smaller pots. Or planted in the ground like a lot of other ones around. I don't know. But that's not good. That's not a good safety thing. We we just we we've been listening to you and have moved it back gradually to try to. I don't know, understand, but I mean a picture tells a thousand is better than a thousand. Doesn't look like anything but an accurate planting will suffice. So okay. That one, yeah. We will mm -hmm. remove all pots. <laughs> okay. Think about uh, the shorter ones or something. Or or shorter pots. Mm -hmm. I, mean, you know, I mean that would work too. Smaller pots, but. Okay, that's it. Now that I totally diffuse Marie, how beautiful Marie's flowers look. <laughs> not just the exclusive. I'm getting this photo with the PD. I think Jim's taking photos from the driver's seat of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the hands free. Yeah, they do look photos. pretty, Marie. They just shouldn't be there. They're beautiful. The hands free sell you. Anything else, James? That's it. Okay, thank you. Kate? I'll shut up. I have been noticing um, many more houses decorated with Halloween stuff this year. And I know that the Diana Parker runs their holiday decorating contest. And I'm yeah. starting to see, it feels like more and more people are doing this. I think it's a reflection of what's happening in the downtown kind of starting to translate out. I just think it's really cool. Do they have a contest for Halloween? Yeah. They're great. And Christmas, both, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. but in Fourth of July. July. Yeah. Fourth of July. Yeah. Right. Cool. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. My favorite, did you heard about the one that was on our um, target list for mm -hmm. health and safety and, um, you know, was getting the letters about you really need to clean this place up and they um, took the theme and they totally designated it as unsafe and do not enter and blocked it all off and everything, you know, and uh, and they won. 
Are you serious? Oh yeah. no. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. You gotta have a self view. Yeah. yeah, totally. Mike? Uh, Stephanie reports that traffic has calmed down significantly. I don't know if that's about the weather or the quiet your ride campaign, but um, things are a little safer on the corner of Bank and Smith, apparently. Um, I wanted the one thing I wanted to mention was that uh, there's this article that caught my eye um, about a week ago in Vermont Digger, uh, where um, they're talking about the uh, changes in population in different Vermont municipalities, and I wanted Dominic and anybody else who is interested in this to to maybe consider if we're a little undersampled in the census because it's difficult to access for the folks who are doing the door to door counts. Um, a lot of our apartment dwellings in the city. And I'm wondering if we, if there's anything that we can do as a municipality to make sure that we're making it as easy as possible for the census workers to access some of those, if we can talk to landlords about when that stuff's gonna be happening, if we can, because that is gonna drive our representation in the legislature. And I cannot believe the numbers that I'm seeing in the census data. It just doesn't make any sense to me that we're, Under that we've lost. Yeah, I think that we're a little undersampled. And and seriously, a couple hundred people could make a huge difference. So that was just something I don't know if we can do anything about it, but sure. I wanted to flag it because it caught my eye. We could offer, um, come, out, you know, uh, come out and be candid. You know? We can partner heavily with the census operations once they get ramped up. And with the online census this year, we can also do our part to make sure everybody knows that you can do it online. Okay. So, water so, sewer bills. Yeah. Um, water sewer bills. Right. It's yeah. Makes it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So I might, the water sewer, if you're looking for apartment buildings, might not be useful just because they may, they may not be metered in individually. Right. So the landlords get, I mean, we get the bill. And then in 2030, after the mainland apartments are. <laughs> Finally counted we missed a it. decade late because they're just barely going to miss April 2020. Mm. Our numbers will be, will be even better. But. Yeah. We could do some blessing. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I did not did that mean to uh, be promoting an inaccurate census count, but just want to make sure that we're not undersampled given that it's uh, we're we're, so we're the only we're the only urban you know semi-urban uh, place where we have the kind of apartments that are hard to access here. Um, yeah. And there's a bunch of people in there. So. A bunch, yeah. yeah. When I, I worked with the census in my previous job pretty closely, there's a point in there, um, there's a point in the operation where they'll start, where they'll, they'll start opening, well, there'll probably be an office in Chittenden County, we'll know who the people are, someone's going to come talk to us. So we'll do everything we can to partner with the effort to make sure that the work, the census workers are going where they should go, but also that uh, everyone, all the residents in St. Albans know that they should participate and how to participate. Mike, anything else? Ted? Uh, two things. Uh, are you going to talk about Veterans Day? I do not have that on my desk, no. Okay. Right. So oh. there's going to be the regular function. And uh, once again, I just hope the uh, the band's going to be there, and I hope that the we have the, the proper policing and the, the, the proper streets blocked off. We did last year, okay, and we did on Memorial Day this year. So I, I just, you know, I just think that there should be no cars from Kingman Street down to uh, Fairfield Street. No cars, nothing going down there at all while those kids are on the road like that, which is one, one of them is mine. So no cars, so just walk. Widen out. Yeah, widened out, and that, and that way the spectators can be out there too, and uh, the, uh, the the cars can go up um, uh, Bank Street and over Church Street until the band gets in front of the uh, the park, yeah. and then the band the band goes up that way, uh, and then they go down Church Street and then into the park. So I think for that small amount of time, uh, they can be redirected down Kingman Street, Main Street cars down Kingman Street and uh, Fairfield Street uh, over towards South Main and Lake Street blocked off until the bands come by. Isn't that the same blockage for Maplefest? Pretty much, but Tim's right in the past, they, the band comes through and cars kind of try to avoid them. Cars are able to travel south 
water right. and water yeah. 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 So we know the, make sure yeah. Yeah. Where are they coming from Tom? Uh, they can they can go the band's coming from BFA okay. and they're, they're coming north up Main Street park. And, yeah. the, and the cars are still able to going go south, south, south right by it and there's, there's, there's spectators out you know, in the, yeah. in the in that lane, trying to look at the van, the cars are coming down, right. and they're interfering with I the kids. Agree. They're not going to be. It's not going to take them that long to go from BFA to no. the park. They can wait. Yeah. Yeah. You know. um, and uh, and also same thing. Uh, I hope the sound system's a little bit better too. <clears throat> you you speak loudly they, into the mic, but the, some people don't, and you you know. It's but just, it's typically it's them. Bad. It's typically the legion. Yeah, that brings in the sound. Is it, okay, I thought it was ours. I think we, I, what I learned was Legion, because I, I did have a conversation with uh, yeah. Tom, uh, Billy Bronson. Um, VFW is in charge of the Veterans Day and Legion's in charge of Memorial Day. Um, and so I did reach out to Billy. Tim and I basically talked about this after Memorial Day about trying to jazz it up a little bit and, and um, uh, see what we can do to to uh, make it more of an event. Yeah. And um, I know General Knight at National Guard in Burlington, uh, Zach over at the Armory, uh, both have committed to making this a better event. Marty also had a great suggestion, which we won't have our act together, but um, where we could uh, do some banners on Main Street with uh, veterans on them. Uh, I gave that information to Bill. So people people would pay a hundred dollars, put their picture of their grandfather or father or son on it. You run it a month before Memorial Day and a month before Veterans Day, and then they get the banner to keep after. The I remember uh, Pete Delorier too when he was USA down in the city. Yeah. Had all the USA kids up here, um, that division of the city school up here, and that made it look like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the old school came. came. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. I, and I, yeah, I, I wish they could do that again. I think if the John, weather's good. I think John Coffey has taken that on. Is he? I'll, I'll I'll speak with him, but I think he's. Okay. Uh, it's just coming. It's November uh, 10th. So uh, the other thing is, um, I, I was gone a couple of days. And I didn't get a chance to look at the messenger every day, but I did see an article in the messenger by Carolyn Brannigan regarding the TIF, and wanted to know if anyone responded to that because she she didn't lay it out the right the proper way. First not. Um, and it, it just was bad. And I almost called her up myself. Uh, but I didn't. Uh, I was just saying, well, Dominic will probably respond to the paper. I kind of forgot about it. I took a couple of days off, went out of state, and never checked to see if. Uh, it's a simple response. Yeah. Because without what's going on now, they don't get the 25 You're right. And that's what she, that's, and, that's de definitely what she left out of that. I've had that conversation yeah. with her, and I know many others have as well, but there's a disconnect there somewhere where she doesn't understand that. She yeah. made it sound like they get all the money. Yep. If not just right. the increment that's increased. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, and they're they're not losing anything. Right. No. Exactly. <laughs> they're not losing anything. Right. They're getting twenty five percent more yeah. than they were. People don't we are, understand. We are growing the education grant list with our program. She understands. I just I just wish that there's someone who's looking at the paper could respond to that kind of stuff. I mean, well, they all support. Yeah, the, uh, they're not, we keep pretty close. They all support the auditors. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, she, she uh, she's a smart lady too. She's she's no dummy. And she just laid that out the wrong way, and I, and I, I just couldn't believe it. I think people are taking sides between us and the auditors, to be honest with you. I think it's, yeah. it's gamesmanship. I think we should ignore it. Eventually, it's just going to go away. But, yeah, but well, this is an argument she's had since day one on the tip. Yeah, she's but, she doesn't really understand. But people are understanding. She was so like that. You, you, yeah. The next four people you talk to are saying, hey, what's going on with the tip? And I said, look, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> this is this is how it is, and you know, and, and I think that people are now will look at it saying, "Oh, well, that's what's why, why am I voting for the TIF?" You know, I know we're getting down to the end game with it, but we count on that support from those people. And we want to change. It certainly depends on the number of dry. I've, I've been I'm trying to lower my blood pressure lately and mm -hmm. uh, take a little distance from the TIF, yeah. and because uh, as soon as I reply, it. Hoffer's good. Like I, it, it just felt like it was this, you know. And Carolyn had her yank about it. She's had it for years. And but I, I'm certainly glad to report. But she completely misstated it. Though. Yeah, it was we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to raise some money for the city. We're going to put a boxing ring and down in the auditorium. You and Hoffer are going out. <laughs> Dude, I can talk about that. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Quickly on mine. Um, for those who haven't listened to the new radio station, 
every morning. 1420. Mm -hmm. It's great to have a local radio station mm -hmm. back in this community. Absolutely. I went to a football game, left early, put on 1420, and the football game was on. Um, I mean, I think that's... Where are they broadcasting out of, too? I heard Edward Street. Mm -hmm. Edward Street, yeah. Um, really? Yeah. Really? I see their car. Oh, okay. That's I what see, I heard. I see their car down further, oh, Huntington or something like that. And then I thought they had the towers over on Mason. The tower is down off lower. Oh, yeah, lower. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But it's great to have it. Um, uh, we need yeah, to get the word sure. out. Try to use that more Absolutely. for a comment mm -hmm. or sound off or what it used to be. I think um, I think it's great to have it. Uh, Maybe they could do some kind of a thing like that, like a comment or yeah. sound off. Just do a show about the TIFF. <laughs> With so Carolyn, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Dom and I had a, I thought was an excellent meeting up at St. Mary's to talk about potential parking. Uh, we're moving that forward for uh, for the high school, utilize that in some form or fashion. So there's, I thought Monsignor Ruth here was open to the discussion. Um, so I think we made some good headway there. Yeah. Um, on October 29th, the Senate Housing and Economic Development Committee is here in City Hall to talk housing, if anyone is interested in attending. I think, Don, are you going to try to make that, Tom? Yeah. What time is that? Um, that is at, right now, it's a tentative time. I think it's 10 to 11.30, or 10.30 to noon, maybe 10.30 to noon. Um, there's also a workforce summit uh, at the museum on October 22nd. Employers in the morning and partners in the afternoon to talk about what might happen relative to um, finding workforce to fill jobs. Um, Marty and I talked about, uh, it appears there's a lot of street signs missing and have continued to be missing. Uh, this came to light in the industrial park. Someone stole them metal Ben and Jerry's directional sign. Um, I don't know if they stole it for the sake because it was a Ben and Jerry sign or they stole it because it was aluminum. So, um, Marty, you, you have an estimate on the number of signs you had come up missing. Right. We've got, we watered some for the hill section because there hasn't been, there's not a high street basically. Yeah. And then Messenger, we ordered probably a dozen, but we are missing about probably 90. Oh, wow. folks. Throughout the city. Do so you think that's one on Thorpe Avenue and a week later it was gone? What's going on? See, I don't know if they're stealing signs for signs or signs for metal. That's, that would be my question. Uh, and so we, we ordered another one for Thorpe and put that up and it's staying for. Yeah. Probably going down to college is, dorm rooms. Right. Is uh, Lexian, it's just Lexian not? I mean, Lexian is worthless. A yeah, little piece yeah, of it that big. I wonder if we count a set of rules that it's going to be a certain size. Size, and you can yeah. you TCD rings. Um, thank you to Marty and Public Works. Um, had to rerun some wires in the park to get lights on the south end of the park that have been off for a number of years. Well, not two years, anyways, I think, almost. Uh, basically, they found that G Green Mountain Power. Uh, switch poles right and then re never reconnected what we had connected to the pole i think that's what the outcome was if i'm not mistaken so uh they found that i don't know when they're going to attach the meter this week they should be He's gonna run the so i think that'll be a nice addition to have the lights on that end of the park um i had another call regarding the passport building parking and um so i don't know uh, that's something Chad and his committee wants to look at, but um, once well, again, it was. What do they want to do with it? Well, that's short for parking time. People coming to do, use a passport center can't find parking because some of the high school kids use it and then they come out and switch every two hours. Mm -hmm. Can there be a couple of suggestions? Can there be designated two or three spots for a passport, or can there be a few meters put there to sort of keep people rotating in and out? Mm -hmm. Those were what I had heard from. Tim mistakes. Tim mistakes a lot of that stuff too. A lot of that parking, right. a lot of times, especially what time, depending on the time of the day, because his parking lot gets full up there and their parking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's very little parking up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and he's a successful restaurant. So. Mm -hmm. Of course, when he went his, uh, during his busiest time at pizza time, they're closed. So, uh, but uh, I would think in the morning it's probably their their biggest. Um, um, the, when they entered the intersection with the yeah. with the passport uh, office. Mm -hmm. The last piece I had was we've been asked to. Uh, to do a Human Rights Day proclamation. Um, so we will add that to your packet next time around, take a look at it, see what people saw there. Um, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I think that's about all I had. Tim, I have one more, I'm sorry. Uh, it was, it's quick. Uh, your light uh, event had me remember this one. Um, does everyone remember when they, we lost the power up in uh, Ward 1, uh, the high street pole snapped? Yeah. Uh, I think we lost a, a light there. I uh, I had them put it back. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Cause, uh, if I, it was in that area, was it farther down the street? No, it, it, no, it's uh, right in that right in that area. Yeah. I, 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 this was about a month ago. We I talked about it with one of the residents up there, and they said, "Well, we we lost a light or something. Maybe it could have been two months ago." We lost. We might have moved it because we put it on every other pole. Okay. It was two next to each other and. Yeah. One of them came out, and I told GMP to do it every other poll. Because yeah. they said it was looking pretty dark up there. And that same spot, there was a snapped pole that, as far as I know, is still there. Uh, it's the other utility, it's the telecommunications that haven't gotten off yet. And I know you've had conversations, Mark. So I, yeah, I had a conversation with Three Map Power, and they're waiting for consolidated Comcast and Xfinity or um, uh, each out to come off, and the last one off is responsible for the poll. I reached out to Consolidate, and they said, yes, it's on the radar, but they are more interested in jobs that pay than doing jobs that don't pay. And I said, that's fine. Just keep that in mind when you want to put another poll in. And the council says no uh -huh. to the other. Good response. Uh -huh. So, yeah, there's also, as Dom is aware, there's three double polls on upper Carrar, Carrar, High, and the so of Congress and High. I think that, and that was going to be my suggestion. Can we start looking at something to try to uh, encourage them? You know, it's five people, 100 bucks a day for having junky cars around. We got it's the same thing. We ought to amend the public health and say what the ordinance to deal with this. That's, I'm that's, all for that. That's I'd be all for that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no incentive on their part. So. No. Can you put that on for next time, Jeff? Okay, uh, we had a couple things. Uh, consider approval of regular meeting minutes from 99. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. I have, I have a correction to that. Um, it was when I, I asked that they trim a tree, and I had mistakenly said 15 North Elm, it should be not uh, 18 North Elm. And the we tree is on. Did you trim the wrong tree? <laughs> <laughs> no, we live at 15. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I yeah, moved. notice it's gone, Marty. <laughs> I move to approve those minutes, boy. With, with the amendment? Yes, with the amendment. Second. Motion by Jim, second by Tim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. I have seen. Uh, motion for warrants, 913 19. Second. There you go. Motion by Tim, second by Chad for 913 warrants. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Motion for warrants, 10 4 19. Motion by Tim, second by Chad for warrants on 10 4 19. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Entertain a motion to go into executive session. We're premature and disclosure for the city of potential risk. Yes, sir. Motion to go into executive session by Chad, second by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes.